Welcome back to the stars everyone, welcome back to Starfield. Today we're going to be talking about the Bridger. This is one of the first heavy weapons that you can get in Starfield. This one is a lever action grenade launcher, which is pretty cool, or I guess it's technically a lever action rocket launcher because this one does fire out rockets. All of the Laredo weapons kind of remind me of like an Old West mixed with sci-fi and cyberpunk weapons. Some of them work out pretty well, like this one, other ones not so much. Uh, it's mostly like this one in the Razorback that I can think that actually look pretty decent. So for base stats, the Bridger has really high damage. It has 127 damage base. That is a lot of damage, a lot more than almost every other weapon in the game. You would kind of expect that from a heavy grenade launcher or missile launcher like this one. This one fires the 40 millimeter XPL round, which is one of two weapons that actually fires it. And it's probably the most rare ammo in the game which is not really the greatest thing. You don't find a whole lot of this from traders, and it is very expensive when you do find it, and you don't find it very often just laying around on the ground. At least I certainly don't. Usually I find like nine of them at a time, which you can go through these pretty fast with this weapon and the other weapon that uses them too. So it really only has competition between itself and one other weapon, but that does come as kind of a major con that the ammo is rare. This one holds four rounds in at base, which is pretty decent. I mean, a grenade launcher doesn't need to hold very many rounds in the first place, even if it just held one. That's fine, so long as it has a fast enough reload speed to it. This one has a 5 rate of fire, one of the lowest rate of fires in the game. Again, not really a huge deal from a grenade launcher. You don't need it to be shooting super quick. So long as it shoots quick enough and it's not painfully slow, that's perfectly fine. This one has 40 meters of effective range, which is pretty good. That's actually pretty far for a grenade launcher, and you're probably not going to be fighting too many fights too far beyond that because the uh, rockets from this do actually have travel time. So whenever you fire them out, they do need to go a certain distance and they aren't affected nearly as much as other bullets in terms of distance to go or in terms of, uh, I guess, just the speed at which they're going. This weapon does have pretty decent accuracy, although you are using a grenade launcher, so you don't need to be terribly accurate with this. Just close enough and it works just fine. And this one is very heavy as you would expect a grenade launcher weighing five and a half weight. So that is pretty hefty, although you're probably not going to be lugging around a whole lot of grenade launchers. You're probably just going to have the one on you, and enemies aren't super likely to have this. It is kind of a rarer weapon. So for the basic pros of this weapon, it does really high damage, as you would kind of hope from a grenade launcher, and it does pretty good AoE damage too. That's nice. It's an explosive weapon, so it's fairly forgiving. You just have to hit close enough, although that can count as a con too, because if you're not watching, and you end up trying to fire this over like railing, you might hit the railing and blow yourself up. That happened to me a couple of times. And this is also a heavy weapon. So that's a big pro because there's not a whole lot of heavy weapons in this game. And the earlier you can get one of these, which you can get this one pretty early on, the better because that just means if you're building towards that class, you get more options, you get more opportunities, and you get to use those weapons a whole lot more. The cons of this weapon are that it has a slow rate of fire, although that might not necessarily be a huge con. Because even if you can't do fast follow-up shots with this, a lot of the time one shot will at least stagger enemies or hurt them. I guess a, kind of another uh, con to go along with the rate of fire is the slow reload. It does take a bit of time to actually reload this. Even with the faster reload perk, it's still not super fast. So the rate of fire plus the reload speed makes it so this is really good for like engaging on targets or ending a fight off with, but during the middle of a fight, it can feel a little bit clunky to use. The ammo for it is rare to find and it's expensive if you're gonna buy it. So you're probably not gonna have a whole lot of it and it's just gonna be costing you a whole lot of money if you wanna be using this. So every time that you miss with one of these is a little bit more painful than if you missed with basically any other weapon because those ammos aren't gonna be as much as this ammo. And the other con is that this weapon is heavy. You can't carry around a whole lot of these, although again, you're probably only gonna be carrying around one. So the con is kind of hit or miss depending. If you find a whole bunch of these then they can actually sell for decent money. Recently on my heavy weapons tier list I put the Bridger into B tier and I would probably keep it into B tier for a couple of reasons. It does do really good damage, it does do pretty good damage per second, and it does give you something effective to start and finish off a fight with. However, the ammo is mainly the biggest con to this. You're not probably gonna have a whole lot of this unless you stockpiled it, in which case then the ammo isn't such a con. And the kind of clunkiness during the middle of a fight can kind of slow this down, especially if you can't get to cover quickly. But it's still a pretty decent weapon if you do have ammo, so that's why I would say like B tier is pretty fair for it. I would say it's above average and it's something that is very, very fun to carry around with you. 
and something that can be super useful in plenty of situations. So there's not really a downside to carrying it, assuming you have the extra carry weight and the extra ammo. Let's talk about a modded version and where I'd put that. So for mods, let's start out at the barrel. And the barrel, interestingly enough on this, actually increases the overall amount of ammo that you have too, because this also affects the tube underneath the grenade launcher. So I would recommend the long barrel that you put on this because this gives you better accuracy, better recoil control, better range, and it also gives you two additional shots. So you go from holding four shots in the gun to holding six shots, which makes it a little bit less clunky during the middle of combat because you probably won't need more than six grenades to hammer out a position where an enemy might be before you can switch to another one or before you can get to cover and start reloading it. Those two extra grenades do actually help quite a bit. For a laser sight, you can just throw a regular laser sight on this. It's either that or nothing does give you a little bit better accuracy which is nice so you might as well put it on at least if you can if not you don't really need to worry about it for optics you can actually put a short scope on this which is funny because then this actually counts towards the sniper perk too and you can get more damage from it so i'd recommend that you don't really need sights on this one because hip firing the grenade launcher is good enough but if you want to put a scope on there and get a little bit more damage out of it you absolutely can and it does make it a little bit easier for targeting enemies that are trying to hide behind specific types of cover at least in conjunction to where you're at because you can usually hammer their position or next to their position to actually deal some damage. For a stocking grip, just put the tactical stock on here. It is the better option. It just gives you more than the standard stock. It makes it so it's lighter weight, you have better ADS times, and you have better stability. Everything's just a pro to that one. For a magazine, you actually have three options and all of them are actually pretty good because you have standard explosive rounds, which are not bad at all. They do the job pretty well. And if you're just trying to hammer a position with explosives, it's pretty decent. The two I'd recommend would be either of the modded ones, either the Hornet's Nest or the Tesla Pylons. Honestly, I like the Tesla Pylons a little bit more than the Hornet's Nest. And the main reason for that is that the Hornet's Round actually does have a limited amount of range. This is based on your total amount of range. And once the Hornet Round hits that range, then it will just explode and fire explosives down, which isn't bad so long as you're fighting within that range. But if you're trying to lob this at enemies, or you don't even really lob it, you just fire it directly at enemies from a long distance, then the Hornet rounds become really inconsistent because you have to aim substantially higher than the enemy so that it hits and then explodes down on top of them. And you still have to make sure that you have enough range to actually hit them in the first place. So Hornet rounds become kind of awkward. They're pretty decent inside of buildings or inside of compounds. But outside of that, and you're just firing at local wildlife, then they become really inconsistent, and I don't really care for them that much. They're a little bit disappointing in this, and if you want Hornet rounds and you want them to be crazy, then just throw them in the double barrel. They're way, way better then, especially because the ammo is super common then. The Tesla pylons are pretty cool though, because this doesn't actually really change your explosive rounds all that much, other than just adding electricity on top of them. So they still explode upon impact, although the explosion radius doesn't seem to be showing as much, and I think that's just a visual thing. I think it has the same explosion radius, at least it seemed to when I was testing this out. And then the electricity lingers and deals damage to enemies there. It also does more damage on hit, and the electricity will slow enemies down. That's all pretty good. I just like the Tesla pylons quite a bit in this one. It's actually pretty decent. Then for an internal, you only have one option, which is a hair trigger. This increases the rate of fire, and this weapon definitely benefits from an increased rate of fire, so I would say go with that one. With all of these added onto the Bridger, I would actually move this up a tier. I'd move it to A tier. It still has the same issue, though, of ammo being kind of rare and kind of just non-existent for merchants. When it is there, it's expensive, so you do have to buy a decent amount of it, or you're going to have to find a decent amount of it, stockpile it up. You can't really be using this as, like, a primary weapon at least for a long term. There is also two unique versions of the Bridger that we need to talk about too. The first one you're probably gonna get once you actually go to Aquila with Sam. This one is called the Ashta Tamer. And this one doesn't really have that many mods. It only has actually one mod on it, but it does have a unique effect. And it is a weapon that you can get really early on. So having a unique Bridger is pretty cool. It's pretty easy to get this. This one just has the tactical stock on it. So it's just a straight upgrade from the standard Bridger. And the unique effect it has is incinerary which incinerary explosive grenades sound really cool and in certain other games they are really cool in starfield not as much in starfield it's just a regular explosive and then they might light something on fire which is cool that still gets you more damage but it isn't you know when it hits it basically explodes like a molotov or something where it just spreads fire out everywhere that would be a whole lot cooler if it did have that this one is still decent though if you want to get it by all means grab it it's one of the early game quests that you can get I believe I sold mine, so that's why there's no footage of it. Or I put it somewhere and I just forgot where it is. So there's no footage of the Ashton Tamer, but just imagine if you could light things on fire once you hit them directly with your shots. 
kind of cool, but not really necessary. The second one is called the Shattered Shock. And this one you get at Londinia. This is during like the Terramorphs quest with UC Vanguard. This one has a couple more mods on it where it has a long barrel, a short scope, and a tactical stock on it. All of those are pretty decent. I believe I took the scope off of mine for some odd reason. Don't know why I did that. But all three of those are pretty nice to have on a gun. And with this one being called the Shatter Shock, it has the shattering effect, which shattering is basically armor piercing in this. This one is definitely the one that I'd recommend over the Ashton Tamer. Both these you can get super early on though, whether you're doing the main quest or doing the UC Vanguard quest. Both are pretty decent, and the Bridger overall is a pretty decent weapon, again, so long as you can get those 40 millimeters. If you can't get them, then you're just not going to be using this a whole lot. This will be kind of a reoccurring theme when we talk about the Negotiator too, which is maybe an upgrade to the Bridger, maybe a downgrade, depending on how you want to see it. They're both pretty even in my opinion, and they're both pretty decent heavy weapons but they do have a big glaring problem, at least with the ammo. Tell me your thoughts on the Bridger down in the comments below. Where would you put it and how are you liking it? I do find it pretty fun and I do like the look of it. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye everyone.